Hey, can Hello, you hear me? Hello, yes. Do you want me to be on video or not? Um, well, I'm playing a game right now, so you probably oh, okay. wouldn't, you just wouldn't be able to appear on the thing. I don't know how I'd put you on there it's without, fine. like, it's fine. It's, don't, game. it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. I don't, I mean, I don't need to be on camera. <laughs> Who cares? How are yeah. you doing? How are you doing? Uh, I'm confused right now because it cut out all of my game audio. Wait, I think I know what's wrong. I understand what's happening here. Give me a second. Headset. Boom. There we go. Problem fixed. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just going to okay, put your, I'm gonna you put your stream better. on. Uh, so I can see what you're up to. Um, just because, I don't know, it's cool to do so. Here, I'll turn off the audio, though. There we go. Yeah, sick. Oh, so you're playing Subnautica, huh? I love Subnautica. Oh, it's an amazing game. Do you yes. want... Oh. I should turn off the TTS when I'm talking to people, shouldn't I? Probably. That'll, That's that'll be loud. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna overshadow things. Um, yeah, no. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, been having a uh off the cuff uh meme stream more or less. Um, although we had some random call-ins, which were actually all very nice. Um, but I, I was originally going to have a conversation with uh Jangles Science Lad today, but Jangles um had to cancel sort of at the last minute. So I've just been doing a meme stream, and it's been very fun. We don't do meme streams all that frequently here, so. This is actually, uh, uh, you know, kind of a meme stream as well. Oh. What I'm doing now. Uh, okay, I'm turning off text to speech. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's disabled now. All right, Damn. that's the last one. Well, I don't even have text to speech working properly anyway. It's just oh. reading off the, the donation amount and the person, not their message. I need to do a thing to make that work. Um, yeah, no, I, um, I, this is actually a meme stream myself. I was just like, you know what? I'm bored. I feel like streaming. I'm kind of feeling a bit down right now because I just found out something really shitty about the algorithm. What did you find uh, that's out? It's a pattern I've noticed. Um, all right. So I guess I can show it on screen right now if you want to see it because I, I just went over it on stream, but um, okay, sure. I, we have more people here now. Yeah, so I mean, I, I did hear I did hear people saying that there was sadness uh, in your stream, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what's up. So um, I don't know, like, the al algorithm thing of a jigger. So. Yeah, here I'll um I'll go ahead and I'll show you what's been up. Sure. So <clears throat> I um a couple days ago, I was at like 61,390 subs, okay? Damn. Pretty good. About to tick over the 61,400. Really nice. Okay. And then out of nowhere, I just started losing subs. Like way faster than I could gain them, I was losing them, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on? What is this? What's what's happening?" Uh -huh. um, and I thought maybe it was just a temporary thing, and it would just, you know, things would come. Okay, turning it off didn't work. Nice. Uh -oh. um, anyway, I, I thought it would go back up and things would be okay, um, but it just kept going down, and now it's dropped back down into the sixty-one thousand two hundreds. And um, as you can see, everything else is down as well. And I was like, "What the fuck's going on?" So uh, I went to Social Blade, uh -huh. I went to Detailed Statistics, uh -huh. and I looked at... So here's where I am right now in terms of sub uh, sub growth. Pretty bad plateau ever since, uh, you know, January, right? Okay, yeah. Not great. I went back to last year, around January to February. Same plateau pattern, and it didn't pick up until May and then June and going into summer and then it, okay. you know, plateaued again. So what I'm thinking is happening right now. I number one mission survive right now. Okay. Just got to keep on making content and survive until May or June when things, when the algorithm seems to pick up my kind of content again, or at least the same with my channel. I've compared huh. it to other political streamers like Vosh, Hassan's channel, destiny, everybody that does like what, what we do yeah. seems like the same fucking thing happens around the beginning of the year up until around may for everybody huh. the problem is i'm in like this weird purgatory area where i make enough money where i can do this as a job but not like to live ultra comfortably to like yeah. live like uh with a little extra money left over so it's like really scary where i am right now yeah in regards to like what's going on with the algorithm you know yeah so yeah that's what i've been dealing with huh damn well i mean uh, you shouldn't lose, like, lose, actually lose subs in the long run, right? Like, I mean, you're, you're, you're more or less just floating and, and dipping back and forth around that number, just not gaining growth, right? And that should pick back up, right? Yeah. So that should be. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll return. Also, like, your site is, like, super nice, so. 
I imagine that'll probably be a huge boost to sustainability because people coming to your site means they're coming directly for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I got to figure out how to turn off the TTS. I don't know what's happening and why it didn't work, but um, no, absolutely. I um, I it's it's just a passing thing. It'll it'll like pass eventually, and yeah. we'll be fine. The only issue is the thing that just worries me is it's just annoying. You know, it it really sucks when you go like one month you're getting a hundred a hundred subs a day yeah and then 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 all of a sudden it stops because the youtube algorithm has just decided you're not in season right now you know yeah yeah 100 subs a day damn that was yeah i hate when i have a month when i get when i don't get 100 <laughs> subs oh no it'll happen and then it'll stop <laughs> happening and you'll be like what the fuck did i do wrong nah i mean i was i was on a pretty good roll to be completely honest for um for uh you know i was on a good roll for the beginning of this month but um well, it's Stuff been happened. it's been an interesting month. So yeah, let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, but hey, my my uh, my giant double team t tag team smackdown of those fucking idiot conservatives on uh, on the Reverie Roundtable was was hella fun. And then I was on with Trihex and Hutch, which was also very good. Um, I love Trihex. He yeah, seems like I really such a like nice Trihex. Dude. Yeah, uh, Trihex gave me a. He, I mean, he said he wants to talk with me again in the future, which would be like super, super cool. Um, but yeah, I was like a little starstruck to be completely honest, because like Trihex is like a legend. So, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is yeah. the tryhard emote. Exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, everyone Most spam tryhard in in. Uh, oh, you have it on here? Sick. Oh wait, I have on, it on my on, website on... and on Twitch. Oh, sick. Yeah, we don't. I don't yeah. think we have any. I don't know if we have any Twitch default. Well, I guess we probably have at least one. Oh yeah, we have the baby. We have the crying baby. I think we have yeah, the baby Isaac rage. somewhere. Yeah, and then we have the crying Isaac too. We have a couple of the basics, oh, yeah. I guess. Um, most of the ones that were just like, yeah. You know, other than that, we've basically re added all of the impo emotes, which I uh, I'm so fucking thankful for. The impo emotes are great, and then we have some other custom ones that we've thrown in. Um, but yeah. Um, I um. I feel like the uh, ooh, lightweight, high capacity tank ooh. modification station. Damn. Oh my god, that's what you need right there. Okay, I'm glad wait, I, I played, decided. Have to... you played uh, the? Wait, so is this this isn't your first time playing this game, right? So this is more or less the furthest I've ever been in the game. Oh, I've shit. never gotten too far, so I'm. It's mostly fresh from here, and I know nothing about Below Zero. I'm depriving myself from any information on it until it's completely done. Hi, Lonnie um yeah uh well it's the good news is is that it's damn near done um they don't have a whole lot left to do uh honestly it's amazing so uh you're in for a treat um this game is one of my favorite games and below zero is also one of my favorite games because i believe it is just about as good as this one um like actually i would say it's about the same but i mean like it didn't it obviously it's hard to beat the first, you know, because they did a lot of new stuff. So, but it's a it's a very good like uh, iteration. It's it's the next, um, you know, it it's it's the same format, a lot of similar recipes and and similar rules, but new environments, new creatures, everything. It's fucking great. So, um, yeah, I, I can't recommend you... it enough. It's so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Once it's fully done, I'll I'll definitely do a playthrough of it. Um, do you think it would be possible for the dev team behind this game? to in the future continue this sort of like universe where there's like alien planets out there and it's the future but have it take place like you're stranded or marooned on like different other different kinds of planets not just like ice planets because if they improve their engine they could probably do a dry land or mostly dry land game pretty well right um i think they're moving on to uh totally different games after sub-zero um or yeah, below zero or whatever it's called. Um, they're moving on to like a different format entirely um, from what I understand. And that makes me a little sad because I do think like I would love more games, but honestly, like I think that they're so talented with making like underwater environments, especially in, in below zero. One of the things you'll note in below zero is like um, the design of the environments is even better than the, than that, than those in this game. Um, I, yeah. I already thought like the, the like visuals of this game is like really perfect. Um, but there were some spots where like, um, well, I guess there's not really anything wrong with, with, um, Subnautica, the first one with regard to environment, but you'll see what I mean when you get the chance to, um, to play below zero, the, 
some especially the like uh deeper biomes in that game are breathtakingly complicated and really organic and they're just like i don't know like it, it was like a whole experience i have so much to say about it i've i've showed it to my stream twice because i'm so impressed with it um i don't know if they would do i don't know if they would do as good with like uh like land games just because they they have so much like there's such a unique 3D element to games that take place underwater, but I bet they could do a hella good space exploration game. Like where, oh, yeah. you know, you're like like going through my, like like nebulas and like my, uh, meteor or what are they called? Uh, asteroid belts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think they would do really, really good with that. Um, yeah, that yeah. would be good. That would be really cool if they did one that was like, Instead of, you know, a submarine, you're flying a spaceship. What is that? Is that a moon pool fragment? Oh, I think this? that's a, the power uh, transmitter. Power, yeah, power transmitter. Yep. What uh, does that do? Um, is that like Wi-Fi power or something? Yeah, it's basically it lets you um, extend the reach of stuff like solar panels and um, uh, geothermal. So like you can you can build further away from um, like a geothermal the vent. Source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can be pretty okay. helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a base ticket. Go ahead. I hear a Reaper Leviathan. Oh, yeah. I think you're... I saw it, too. Oh. I need to make that fucking uh, stun cannon thing that freezes things in place, because I got jump scared by a Reaper Leviathan earlier when I was searching by the ship to try to find the Mike Markiplier pod my chat kept telling me about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I found the Markiplier pod. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Oh, hello, giant uh, electricity eels, I guess. Oh, yeah, these guys are hello, fuckers. Are um, yeah, the... And the bone sharks here. There's a lot of stuff. This, this is an air, a dangerous area. But also, uh, these geothermal vents are, like, hella helpful. There's, like, really good materials down in there, if you can get in there. Um, yeah? Yeah. Honestly, I was... um. God, uh, there's so much good stuff. I can't... I'm really excited for you to finish this game and, like and get to play some of the stuff because i don't know i feel like i feel like it's one of those things where um below zero is better if you've played the first one just because you get to see what they iterated on and like what they chose to keep the same and what things they chose to change um oh yeah but yeah it's very good there's also like again like totally unique life forms and uh biomes it's really good <laughs> so yeah oh okay, yeah i'm excited yeah. to see what they do with things because um I, I can't see this game being improved all that much besides like making dry land better. Hello, giant thing. I think you're a oh you're yeah. a bone shark, aren't you? Uh, Ooh. Dry land is is um expanded pretty significantly in um below zero. Um there's like a lot more stuff you can do on land. And um and uh oh, my chat wants wants me to tell you that you should probably take some time poking around in those vents um because you might find something you need for the stasis gun. Um, Stace, okay yeah. all right i'll have to keep that in mind it yeah. seems like the vents are pretty important yeah they have like vents are dangerous but they all often have like really good materials that you need um yeah so they, they do improve um dry land in fact there's like quite a bit more on land exploration but it's usually kind of like it's interesting you like jump in and out of water and swim through little tunnels and it's pretty good so um but yeah, most of most of the game is really just more like, um, like it's not really like a, a like they're trying to make like a better game or like bump up the graphics or anything. It's more just like, hey, like what if we did this but more stuff and different? And it's like I'm cool with that because yeah, I'm fine with games when they do that sometimes. If they don't like, they don't have to like revolutionize the entire game every single time. So. Yeah, it's like it's similar. Some things are changed, but it's a new environment. It's something that I think a lot of people would be interested in in yeah. uh, in this sort of setting. Like, I think I remember like somebody mentioned. I haven't seen the end of the game yet. I haven't seen like the cutscene or anything like that because mm -hmm. I know there's a cutscene. But um, apparently, reinforced dive suit. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna die. I might die. The first uh, time oh I God, played I'm this game, they around. hadn't even added those uh, little disc sets that you or those little yeah the little cd things that like you can the little find. updates yeah the yeah. upgrades they weren't even in the game. yeah yeah i the first time i ever saw this game was uh frankie on pc in 1080p his video on the game oh wow or his video series little mini series thing oh god please god help me oh no i think you got, 12 this. Seconds. You got this you got this you got this 
You're good. You're where's good. Where's the exit? Where's the exit? Sure. Oh, oh, it's right there. You just ran past it behind you. Behind you. Oh. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Thank God. Good shit. I'm going back to my fucking base. I'm making the exp the expanded oxygen tank. I am going to the Aurora. I need to actually repair it now because I forgot to repair it. And I'm getting the radiation out of there so I can get the reinforced dive suit and the good, the better oxygen tank that I can make. <sighs> Hell yeah. Yeah, they also, uh, the light ultra, the light ultra capacity also wasn't in the game. You used to be maxed out at, uh, at the high capacity tank. Um, they've made a lot of improvements since I, um, uh, since I, I played this game in like, like early beta when I first played it, and then I've played it again since then. Um, but, yeah. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, the, I, I don't know if you've ever seen Frankie on PC in 1080p, mm -hmm. but that was that 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 was a bit you know earlier in the game's development. Have I searched this life pod? Life pod six? Looks like one I might not have searched yet. Hmm. I, I bet think, I haven't. Uh, yeah, this is the one. This is the one that like I, I always I find it before I get the hint for it. <laughs> I think I found life pod three early. Yeah. I usually find a lot, I usually end up, because of the way that I move around in these games, like, I tend to find the life pods before they even give me the hints, and then I get a hint for an empty life pod, and I'm like, god damn it. Yeah. But... Yeah, no, that's annoying, yeah. I wish, like, I almost wish they spawned in after they gave you the uh, hint, because it is kind of weird when you find them early, and the way that I see it, like, the way those announcements go out, it seems like those life pods are just out there floating, mm -hmm. and then at some point something attacks them and makes them sink. Um, it depends if you like. Each one actually has like okay, not all of them have story, but multiple of them do have like story stuff. You just have to actually read the PDA thing, so it's not very good for like it's not very conducive for reading on stream. But most of them do have no. like a story of what happened to each pod. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Most I think just got attacked by Reaper Leviathans or yeah. uh, Bone Sharks and shit. Yeah. Yeah, some of them. I think one like, well, there's one that landed in like the worst spot imaginable. I'm sure you'll probably find that one eventually. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've been playing. Let's see. What have I been? I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing Curse of the Dead Gods. Um, recently, and then also Valheim. Um, I heard that's good. Yeah, Valheim is really fun. Um, Valheim is like, uh, like, uh, well, honestly, it, it it reminds me a lot of Outward, which is another game that I uh, it really really enjoyed. Um, it's it's pretty fun. It's a little janky um, at times, but nonetheless, really really enjoyable. It's it's really strange. Like it's like I, I would say it's like a mixture of like Minecraft and RuneScape. Like you spend a lot of time um, harvesting stuff, gather like chopping down trees, but like everything in the game has a skill that you level up, like in RuneScape. So like everything you do, running, jumping, hitting axes, pickaxes, every single thing has a skill that you can level up. Um, and then there's also like they have that like floating number aesthetic where like everything you hit has like a little floating number that's like color coordinated to know how much damage you're doing and how much your skill is applying and it's very satisfying in that way. Also the building mechanics, the building mechanics are a little bit hard to understand, but once you get them you can make such awesome buildings in Valheim like Valheim has this whole like physics system for how you like support your buildings and you can just build these incredible fortresses as the game goes on super super cool there's like a portal system there's a bunch of magic and then there's like a like a just a massive tree of stuff that you can um craft it's pretty satisfying i gotta say and also the like ambience is like really nice um very very relaxing like forests and and just these the sprawling world with tons of places to explore um there's like these dungeons the dungeons aren't like so far the dungeons aren't like that big of a part of the game um but I think, but from what I understand, like the further you get, um, like the further you move out from your starting area, the more complicated the dungeons get. And eventually I think the dungeons become like really, really big where you have to like plan in advance and like set up little bases inside the dungeons, which is like super awesome if you ask me. So yeah, huh. I'm excited to get into that. Well, I have been enjoying, um, I've also been enjoying, um, curse of the dead gods. I don't know if you've played that or heard of that one. I've never heard of it. Um, it's. I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I have a Subnautica question. Yeah, sure. I th I got some new recipe for an air tank, and it's uh -huh. not appearing in my blueprints or my. 
or my uh, uh, crafting thing. Yeah. My instructor. It is the, uh, you need to go to, you need to build a um, upgrade station. And it, it, this is, it's really stupid, but it's, for some reason, the um, lightweight, high, uh, high capacity tank is in the mod, uh, the modification station. So you got to build one of those first. Huh. Modification station. I assume that's something. Yeah, it'll be habitat builder, and then it should be um, right there. Interior it's great out there. Modifications can't make it yet. Yeah, you got to find one more. Yeah, the modification station is what you need to build that, and the upgraded, um, the upgrade. I think the upgraded suit you need for that too. Um, huh. Well, you know what that means, chat. We're uh, going to the Aurora, and we're repairing wait, that shit. So I can... is the jukebox yeah. in this game? I can't remember if they put the jukebox in the first one. Is it in the is the jukebox in there? Okay, if the jukebox is in the game, you like I know that you might not be like super jazzed by a jukebox, but you gotta build the jukebox. Oh, there is no jukebox in game one. Damn it. Okay, it's only in the second one. Okay, when you get into huh. when you get into below zero, don't don't skip the jukebox. It's not like like some games jukeboxes kind of suck. Nah. The the fucking Subnautica jukebox is so good. It's so fucking cool. It has like directional audio. It sounds super good. It like you could play music that blasts out into the water. Oh, it's so fucking cool. Anyway. <laughs> Does it actually have like an in-game effect too? Mm -hmm. Like it attracts things or scares things away? Um, I don't know. Well, I assume that it does actually produce sound um to like uh to like affect animals but my base was never close enough for me to be able to test it but i was but like it was super cool because you could be i could be out in the water like farming or or gathering resources around my base and that you could listen to the music like like with this like really cool like water like like water distortion sound and it was just like oh this is so vibing so cool huh yeah. yeah that sounds really cool i think the only thing i've seen of below zero is i've seen some concept art because uh, mm -hmm. I saw a video like about it when people were theorizing about like because I think like they mentioned that in the final uh, scene like the the cut scene of the end of this game they like the character slowly looks and sees the ice part of the planet and then some concept art leaked that was like pictures of these weird penguin creatures and mm -hmm. um, yeah that, that's all I know of it so far yeah thankfully um, there's not a whole lot of like spoilers are pretty well under control um so but honestly like i think that most of the stuff in subnautica below zero is is pretty tough to be um it, it's pretty tough to be spoiled on most of it is experiential like you just got to play it okay. yourself and even if people tell you about it it doesn't mean anything until you actually do it yourself um in my opinion so okay yeah it's uh it's really good um i just really want to go in completely blind i feel like it'll be good content yeah i think you'll have a really good time uh it's definitely a game that would be like i think enjoyable for a lot of people especially because it's in my opinion it's probably a little bit scarier than this one um mm. maybe maybe not quite as much there are certain there, i guess it depends in some ways it's scary in some ways it's not um but god the the zone design is just so they spot got better on. at it yeah, yeah, like, even better. Like, again, this game has, like, really good zone design, but you'll notice, like, even here, like, there's a lot of areas of this map where there's just, like, it's kind of barren, like this, Yeah, you know? This and, area like, makes sense, to be fair, but yeah. yeah it does, like, th but there's just, there's, like, a lot of areas like that in this game. Like, there's, like, the mountains and this, and the area near the Aurora, which is all sandblasted, which is fine. There's just a couple of areas where it was, like, it's clear they were they were a little bit limited by, like, how ambitious the project was which is not the case in subnautica below zero and below zero it's just like every single zone feels very intentional and like and crafted and and complete which is very nice so yeah yeah this game feels like it could be procedurally generated but i know it's not yeah it's not. i've been i've been alerted that it's not but it feels like it totally could be yeah um yeah, it seems like the way you're describing it, Subnautica Below Zero does not feel that way. Like, you can tell this is a meticulously crafted world. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, and like, there are elements of this of this game that are like that. Uh, I think especially as you get further on, um, where you can see uh, they were s sort of branching out a little bit, because especially the stuff that was brought into the game towards the end of the development cycle um, in this game have a lot of similarities to what they did in in below zero but um but yeah below zero is just spot on with environment design and uh 
I'm really excited that you're going to get to play it. Um, yeah, oh, oh apparently somebody says that they wanted it to be procedurally generated originally, but they didn't actually have time. Well, I'm kind of glad that it didn't end up being that way. I'm also glad they didn't end up doing that for Below Zero because uh, Below Zero is amazing. And uh, I love that. I love those like like tightly crafted, really, really beautiful zones. So. Um, yeah, I think it used to be proceed. I think this game was procedurally generated, at least when I first watched like Frankie on PC play it. And this was like mm. back in 2014 when it first came out. Um, yeah, I think it used to be, but they changed that. You also had like this terraform feature where you could like dig the sand and stuff like that, but they took that out. Yeah. The, they, I'm glad, I'm kind of glad they kept the terraforming out. Like, uh, per like I like games where you can terraform, like, don't get me wrong. But this type of game is like, I feel like it would become all about the terraforming and would lose its its really wonderful survival water elements. Um, there are some, of course, frustrations. I mean, bu base building can be a little bit weird and and um, awkward at times. They do improve the base building. The base building is improved in um, in the second game. Like they they tighten oh, it up quite a bit. God. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I literally just can't exp expand my my current base at all. Because um, for one, it won't let me place any of those like braces, and I can't pl physically place any more um, foundations, so I can't add on to it without it like breaking. Oh, that's really weird. Damn, yeah, I picked a really bad spot, I guess. Well, but I'll yeah. I'll expand somewhere else eventually. Like this, I'm in, currently in like a temp base. Yeah, um, I found that in this game, like I found that my like ideal number of bases was like two, um, and honestly it's a little easier to get by with one like big mega base in um in the second one but i think uh, i don't know that might not be the case once the game is completed because i know they have like one one or two more zones to add to the game that are already done but that they just haven't put in yet um yeah so it might it might be yeah. another two base kind of game um yeah it's it's yeah, I, I think I did. Actually, I think the first time I... Oh, no, I did have a second base. I built a really weird base in, in my second in my first playthrough. The first base I built was, like, near the Aurora, and then the second one is in a place that you haven't been yet. Um, but good luck with it. It's really cool, and I was very happy with that base. <laughs> the furthest I've been so far was the Brine River. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, then, that, yeah. Okay, so I built it in the Brine River, but in a very specific part okay. of the Brine River. Um that was I was very happy with. Um, Did you build it like inside the giant skeleton? Uh, no, I actually built it. Uh, I, you might have already found it. Have you found like the giant tree area, like in the Brine River? Like it's a big, pretty tree. Yeah, it's like this huge tree. Um, and I vaguely remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like crab squids and stuff. Yeah, I built it like literally under the tree. So I had like this little base that was like hidden underneath the tree and it, and I expanded it all out. And I had my, um, I had parked my, um, my, uh, Cyclops there. It was, oh, it was so cool. Yeah. It was, I was really happy with that base base placement. And I was able to bring, I had to do a couple of like annoying trips to begin with, but I was able to bring a bunch of, um, like harvestable ingredients from this first areas and just plant them outside the base. So I didn't have to make multiple trips back. I was just able to use it as just like, and it and an end game base that served all my purposes until I beat the game. It's pretty great. That's pog as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I um I think that big tree area with the crab squids is where I quit last time I played. I got like um I took my prawn suit down there because my prawn suit had like one upgrade on it, I think, that I had. Yeah. And that was enough to get me down there because the I think maybe it was even the base prawn suit. Because the prawn suit lets you go deeper. Um like by default than uh -huh. like even my current Seamoth does, I think. And so I went down there with that, and then it ran out of out of power, and I was stuck down there. I just kept on drowning, trying to get you know out of the cave area into the surface. So yeah, I think that's where I ended up quitting and just like saying, "All right, fuck it, we'll play a different game." And now I've returned to the game. Oh, you got this? Oh, pog. Weed time. Ooh, sick. Good shit. If it goes off, you have to take it five times. <laughs> ah, I hate weed. Fuck. Really? Oh, I love weed. Uh, you're, you're doing those fucking vapes. Those things are strong as shit. You just like hate the flavor. It's just or... a, yeah, I hate the flavor. It's just a vaporizer. Yeah. Oh, uh, damn. Oh, I hate. It. I'm doing this for you, chat. This is because you guys donated so much. I'm doing it for you. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a big weed liker. 
uh, over here. I'm 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 the big I'm the weed liker. Uh, Chad oh, weed liker. Chad weed, yeah, Chad weed enjoyer versus virgin weed not enjoyer. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I hate the taste so much. It doesn't even. It's like it lingers too. You know. It well, lingers. with the vapes, yeah. With the vapes, yeah. If you're if you're fucking vaping it, yeah. Hey, Lonnie, can you get me like some chips or something that I can snack on to try to get the flavor out of my mouth? Just like a little bit. I'm not gonna overeat. Trust me. I don't have the munchies or anything. Usually, what happens, I have, I've ha I've smoked weed three t or six times in my life. Damn. All of them since I turned 21 and moved to California, so completely legal. Yeah, of course. Of course but yeah. um, three of those six times I threw up because I let the munchies get the uh get the uh upper hand on me you know and i ate too much and i end up throwing up oh damn i've never i've never th uh never thrown yeah, i've never thrown up because of weed um yeah uh vapes are really really easy to overdo um they're like they're basically they're really similar to dabbing which is like crazy strong um but they're pretty close as far as like how high it'll get you um Personally, I pretty much mostly just smoke flour, um, which I find to be very enjoyable and also very flavorful. Um, but oh, yeah, th this yeah. is a vaporizer, so there's flour inside this thing. It's oh, just heating okay, it up. Okay, okay, okay. Like, it's it's dehydrating the flour. Yeah, yeah. Like when I, it doesn't actually burn it. It just like gets it really hot, dehydrates the flour. Yeah. I yeah. there's been one time where I thought I smelled really good weed, and I would I maybe it would it taste as good if it ta if it tastes how it smells, then I would like it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was on the streets in LA. Me and Lonnie went to visit Denims, who I believe is coming to visit on Friday, by the oh, way. So we'll sick. do some streams together. Um, me and Lonnie went to visit Denims and we went to LA and it was my first time in LA. Me, Lonnie, and Denims were walking down the street and I smelled someone smoking weed and this weed just smelled really good. Mm -hmm. Like it just had like a really nice smell. And I was like, I, I didn't know where that person was. I wanted to ask like, Hey, like wh where, wherever you are. What strain is that? What's it called? Yeah. It well, the good. fruity strains are like super, super good. Yeah, I tend to be, uh, I don't know. I, I tend to be a pretty big fan of like, I, I don't like like the skunky stuff. Some people really like that. I don't like that shit. It's too strong. It's like, I don't I don't like the flavor of that. But most other types I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with. Although for sure, my favorite is like uh, a, a nice infused joint with like a fruity strain is like spot on. I love that shit. Yeah, skunky gynotype. Like, you know, it kind of smells like a skunk, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Some people really like it, though. Like, that some people just like those strains. I don't really, but that's just me. Yeah, I'm not enjoying this much. Uh, the taste, I mean. Yeah. Well, it tastes like... Um, mostly not the like, taste anyway, so... Yeah, my whole family basically has always smoked weed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe extra legally. And, it, and it's like, holy shit. Like, it... it I can't... When I smelled weed when I was like younger, mm -hmm. before I ever tried it, I was like, eh, you know, smells mm -hmm. all right. You know, probably doesn't smell like it would taste too bad. Ooh, thank you. Orange juice. Thank you. Like, mm. Ooh, chips. Thank you, babe. Oh, those look like they're sour cream and onion. Oh, shit. Chips, chips and fucking mm. chips and fucking OJ. Oh yeah, no that that got the taste out of my mouth immediately. God damn. There you okay, go. that'll do it. There we go. Whew. Wow. Nice. Um. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, like it always smelled weed, and I was like, okay, it doesn't smell bad. But then I tasted it, and now I can't help but associate the smell with the taste. Yeah. And sometimes, like when Lonnie would like uh, smoke weed, and I'd be sleeping, it would wake me up, and I'd be like, please put it out. I'm gonna throw up. You know. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Right. Just, Everybody's got their own the... preferences and stuff. Yeah, it's weird too because everybody in my family loves weed, and and I'm the only one that just can't stand the taste. But maybe I just haven't found the right strain. It's There's possible. tons of, of you know dispensaries around me. Maybe I'll go there and I'll like maybe do like test smelling if they let me do that. Yeah, they usually of, like, will. Different yeah, people are recommending like... a wedding cake, which I, I will say like wedding cake and cookies are both like strains that tend to be pretty um like good flavored. Um, personally, I'm trying to think, God, I mean, well, you're in Cali, so fuck, you can get, you can get some of the real, oh, fuck, you can get, you could probably find, like, real Jack Herrera, um, which is my favorite strain of all time, I think, um, and also tastes very, very, like, 
er, like very very like chill herbal so it's like not super super strong it's got a little bit of like a like a little tiny bit of the piney flavor um but that shit is also fucking just crazy good crazy strong but yeah you kind of have to ask for that specifically um mo i don't know if people will carry it down that far south um i'm sure there's probably somebody who will um but yeah real real jack herrera is like got to be one of the best strains of all time in my opinion um really really conquers that's cr or cronkers yeah that's wild damn <clears throat> but yeah God, um these chips are amazing <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm just like yeah no i'm, I'm getting the weed the weed vape hits me a little different yeah i have to say though something that i love about weed um oh have i searched this uh upturn pod yet pod four doesn't look like i have i see light coming out of it um one thing that i've noticed is that C the CBD or uh -huh. CBT? <laughs> no, but the CBD in um in weed, uh -huh. it um it, it affects me really nicely. Mm -hmm. I um when I get high, I feel like I could dance. Like all my joint pain, all my muscle pain, headaches, neck pain, back pain, all of it gone almost instantly as soon as it starts to hit. And um, I really like that. So I bought a CBD vape that has no THC in it. So it doesn't get me high, but I can't oh. find it. I lost it, but I would always take a hit from it. And I felt, I felt so good. Yeah. CBD is supposed to be pretty uh, in general is generally considered to be pretty good for the pain aspect. Um, and I will definitely agree that like uh, finding at least from personal experience, uh, finding like the right balance of like um, ratio between THC and T and CBD is like really important for, um, for getting like the right, the right fit for you. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend like going into the store sometime and just like most places will literally have displays where you can, they'll have these little things that you can open up and smell it and like find, find one that smells right for you. You could also just ask, um, depends on where you go. Obviously not every store is the same, but, um, I've been to like four different like stores across two States in like the last two years. And like, all of them had like really passionate staff. It just seems to be an industry that attracts a lot of passionate people. And if you tell them what you're looking yeah. for, they'll usually be able to, um, they'll usually be able to get you something that'll be like, um, the right fit. Um, yeah. And then of course, like you could always try like, um, I mean, it sounds like you have like an herbal vape right now. You could also try like doing the, um, the like, uh, live resins or, or distillates. Um, mm -hmm the like those are like you'll they have like a little cartridge with like an oil in them um and those ones sometimes they will they you can actually get them with like added um fruit stuff like fruit flavoring that will totally mask the flavor if so it's like the um if the flavor is like a big issue for you or like it damages your enjoyment a lot try and get one with a flavor in it and it will like totally you won't even know that you're you'll barely even know you're smoking weed until it hits you because it just tastes yeah. so different yeah. When I'm excited to try, I'm probably going to die. I'm going to be the first ever weed overdose when this happens. I have promised to Hyena that um, when I go visit Vosh and Hyena, which will have to be probably like around summer, I imagine then I'll probably be able to afford to do this, Hopefully. but um, around uh, uh, summer, I have promised that I will not try any... Um, how do I even rotate this? What? Can I even do that? Yeah, uh, I will not try. Stuff. I will not try edibles until I go to visit them, <laughs> um, and then I will try edibles. They're gonna make them homemade for you, because if so, you're gonna get fucked up. Yeah, homemade? May I don't know. Probably just go to like a shop, right? Seattle has those. Oh yeah, but but okay. So here's the thing: edibles that you buy in a store are like highly, highly restricted in how much, um, in like how much they can actually uh like put in per one so like if you get edibles at a store they're always going to be um they're always going to be 10 milligrams like per edible which is not very which is like i mean it's fine for, but like it's not all that much if you make them at home you can make them way 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 stronger so like the real edible experience of like getting fucked off your ass is like uh is is you got to do the homemade stuff or you have to eat like an absolute f metric fuckload of ones that you buy from the store um but like the st but then it's like i don't know then you have to pay a whole but bunch the, if you make it but at then home, the problem you can, like, also is yeah. the problem also is edibles take a long time to set in yeah they take so about, they take might, like yeah. like an hour and a half to two hours 
and yeah um but but nah if like if you're if you're gonna be hanging out with like um with with Vosh and, and uh, vermin like vermin vermin knows their weed really well so like I'm, I'm sure i'm sure they'll be able to get you set up just right yeah yeah, yeah they'll they probably they would probably be like hey I want to see you lose your shit, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll I'll make you something. I don't know. I feel like they would do that. Yeah, I mean the thing is, so like I can't really, I don't really enjoy edibles that much anymore. I used to love edibles, um, but um, I my body has like a really hard time digesting um like fats. It's long story, but anyway, my body has a hard time digesting fat. So um, so like edibles and THC is fat soluble, which means if I take edibles. Um, there's like a 50, 50 chance that the edibles just like won't get absorbed, which really sucks. Um, so mm-hmm. I don't really do edibles all that much anymore. Um, but I used to fucking love them. And there was this, God, there was this amazing, we got this, um, we got these Halloween edibles. They were a special, uh, a special, okay. So there were two different, really amazing edibles I've had. There was these ones that were these little tiny, uh, edibles that were like a tiny gummy square and they tasted really strongly of flour. And it was like, but you only had to eat a little bit of the gummy and they were crazy strong. And they ended up getting actually that brand ended up getting shut down because, um, the edibles that they were shipping to market were above the legal amount. So they were actually listing them as significantly weaker than they actually were, which was awesome for anyone who enjoys it, but not good for the state. Um, and then those ones were awesome. And then we also got these special Halloween ones that were like thrills and chills was like the mood, re- the mood rating. And those were amazing. I ate like three of those one night when we were, we were in the middle of a snowstorm. It was absolutely miserable. We couldn't go anywhere. So I ate like three of them. And then I played uh, death stranding for like four oh. hours straight. And it was just the best, the most fucking amazing, like one of the best highs I've ever had in my entire life. Just completely vibing out and just playing the shit out of fucking package delivering simulator with a bunch of like great music because that game has an amazing soundtrack and just playing oh, through course. the story. Oh, so good. Such a good experience. When, um, oh God, they, the soundtrack's so good. I actually really enjoy Death Stranding's gameplay. And ironically, me too. Me too. it felt really yeah. satisfying to me. Yeah, I got annoyed when I do combat. When I'm when I got a big old delivery, I'm just like I want to make my delivery, make and then I delivery. run into the actual combat part of the game. It's like, oh, I actually just want to make deliveries deliveries without BTs or mules or um, terrorists trying to stop me yeah. and ruining my. I just enjoy making deliveries. That's the fun. I'm having fun doing that. Yeah, it was. It's a really good game. I I I love. I played the shit out of that game. I have like 21 stars or something on my uh, on my little outfit, um, plus all the gold stuff and. Yeah, it was super, super fun. I, I like that game. Plus, God, the, the fucking low roar soundtrack. Oh, yep. so good. Um, oh, my God. There's like Bones is probably one of my favorites, I think. Yeah, I like. Um, wait, what's that? Sandra? Oh, synthetic fibers are from Blood Kelp. Let me go over to where the Blood Kelp is then. I have no idea where it is. Does anyone know? I'm trying right. to figure out. I'm trying to remember the name of the, the title of the track right now. It's slipping my mind. Da, 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 da. Da, oh yeah, I know the one. Da, um, yeah, I know the one. Ba, da, it's, um, ba, yeah, it's da, called Asylums, Asylums for the Feeling or something. Da 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 yeah, I got so it on good. My, on my playlist. Yep, basically every song from Death Stranding I have in my playlist. The good ones, like they're all pretty good, but. My sense of like what I enjoy in music is usually based on how catchy it is, unironically. Yeah, I mean it's fucking great. Um, God, there's so much good music. Also, there is a really, really good track. Uh, there's actually two really god tier tracks in Subnautica Below Zero on the jukebox. So you have those those two uh, to look forward to. Yeah. Alrighty, yeah. Um, you got my you have my interest quite peaked. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for I'm I'm really happy you're playing Subnautica. I I like this is one of the games that I like. Tell everyone to go play. Um, this one Darkwood is the other one. I did a review of Darkwood on my channel. It was my first official review I ever did. Um, that game is good. Um, and then Pathologic. Those are the ones I always tell people to go fucking play. Yeah, um, I heard Pathologic is good, but I don't like reading, so I don't know. Wait, is that Blood Kelp? That looks like it could be Blood Kelp, right? Uh, is that it? Nah. No? Wait, here? Oh, actually, it might be, yeah. Actually, I think it is. Yep. 
Looks Sorry, like I health. thought you were talking about the red stuff. No, I think I this is. Yep. So where the yep. gel sacs are. Yeah. Okay. Easy yep. clappers. Okay. Do I have to pick the little, the little thingies for the blood stuff? Or yeah, blood oil. Yeah. Give me. And I'll probably I'll knife this a few times because I probably have to get the. Oh, you don't actually have to knife it. Cool. Neat. Well, uh, Pog. Yeah. I got a bunch of blood oil. Um, Pathologic 2, uh, I wouldn't say it has too much reading, but it is a thinky game. That much is true. Um, I don't like thinking. Darkwood. I turn my brain off when I play games. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. That makes sense. I can, Unless I can I'm playing Subtech Ages. Subtech Ages makes me turn my brain on too much. What game? Um, it's a big Minecraft mod pack. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, is that the one with the? I think I saw you. I think that was you were playing that last time we were talking with all the like, uh, re recyclers and shit. Right? You Probably had like all these magic that. recycling things where you were like alchemizing stuff into. No, other stuff. that was that was Tech It Classic. Yeah, no. Oh. Uh, Septic Ages is like um, it's basically you start out in the Stone Age. Like to even make a crafting table, you get a crafting stump. And you have a crafting rock and you lay down the ingredients on the table then you smack it with a rock to make things <laughs> then you have to advance through the ages from like the stone age to like the uh bronze age to the and then like right now i think i'm in like age three you start at age zero and then it goes up to like age seven i believe and um it's like really deep and it takes like months to actually fully complete the mod pack but eventually you go from like literally grug you know yeah. just grug to um having like jetpacks and going to space and exploring the galaxy oh that's super or the solar cool system, i should say because you can go to different planets yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome um we played uh have you played ancestor humankind odyssey i've heard of that yeah and i've watched a bit of gameplay it seems like it's interesting it yeah, reminds me of a lot of a game I've, I've been playing a little bit recently called um this land is my land oh, he plays like a native american I've heard guy that. and you have to like you have to slaughter all these white colonizers and sort of build up your army and your resistance and explore this mass American frontier from east to west and like collect guns and weapons and ar make an army to take to like take back America. It's really fun. Damn, that sounds that sounds really cool. Yeah, we had fun when we played um, Ancestor Humankind Odyssey like two or two times I think two streams two of my gaming streams I did. But now we started uh, Hollow Knight. I uh, told my chat I would play through Hollow Knight on stream. Um, so yeah so um so yeah uh it's uh yeah it's 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 pretty good uh but I, i'm looking forward to playing through hollow knight again i've already beaten hollow knight once but i wanted to play it for the chat so um i've never played hollow knight but i've been told it's quote very cozy so i might play that it is um it's really challenging um like the boss fights and stuff are really challenging but the like general um atmosphere is like really really cozy and and also just like i don't know the music is so good it is so good the music is so fucking good and it's like there's like uh, it's a full like original um soundtrack so like the there's just like so many tracks for all the areas and you spend a lot of time like exploring these big sort of sprawling maps and so you get to enjoy the the soundtrack like to its full extent um so yeah it i i highly recommend it I, it's one of my uh it's one of my favorite games like like it's probably like on my top 10 list uh hollow knight is probably the best like modern like i guess metroidvania is the word i don't really love that term but um but yeah, um, it's it's one of my favorites. It's probably my my favorite modern one of all time. Um, though of course I like some of the classics. Um, but but yeah, you know what? Um, I've I, this is a game that you have probably heard me talk about a million times because I've been looking forward to it since 2018. Hightail, oh, there we go. Yeah, Hightail. I know. I've been. I you've hyped me up on it a couple times. I've been keeping an eye on it from a distance. So yeah, we're supposed to get it this year. Probably an open beta. Oh shit. And, um, yeah, they actually, um, I made a snuck in, but, uh, there was this, uh, little thing that some of the devs at the game did for some like game development college mm. in, um, the UK. They did like a presentation talking about their history. And while they didn't announce a release date or a narrow re release window, 
maybe this is looking too much into it, but somebody came on to ask a question, which is like, do you guys plan to hire anybody new uh, anytime soon? And they said, well, right now we're not looking for any more new hires besides what we have on the list because we're focusing on um, marketing uh, and like rollout or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's like um, marketing and so on, like stuff that you would assume would come along with like the release of the game, right? Like mm. to hype up the game and everything is that's what they're working on right now for the next couple months. So it Ooh. seems like sometime around May or June is when we might get some, you know, is when we might get the game oh, or at least like they're going to so it seems like summer 2021 is when we might get it. That's what I'm guessing. Sick. Probably June or July. Well, I'll be checking it out for sure. Um, uh, again, I've been aware of it thanks to you. Um, so, uh, but also one of my partners has like been really hyped for it as well. Um, though, Ooh. yeah, um, she plays like a lot of games similar to that. It was like super into Minecraft and stuff. Um, I, I played Minecraft like um, quite a bit in al in the like alpha and early beta days, and then I got out of Minecraft. That was like when I was in college, and then. And then I kind of fell out of it, and then uh, it became, like, what it is now and been, like, a, a sensation. And I've played it a couple times since then. In fact, I – excuse me. Uh, I got a bit of a hiccup there. But um, we have a we have a Minecraft server. Um, I just I – don't I don't play on it personally, but a lot of people on my server do um, do play it. So I guess we do have a Demon Mama um, Minecraft server. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Minecraft is fun. I think it's um... – if I'm being honest, I think in many ways it's not that great. I have a lot of criticisms of Minecraft, and I really ten thousand hours. Of <laughs> I have probably ten thousand hours in the game. I would guess <laughs> more or less. Yeah, no, I've, I played the game since I was uh, ten years old. Wow! So consistently too. Like it's not like oh on and off occasionally. It's been fairly consistently. I've been playing the game for that long. Well, and I'm really curious. What does this new suit do? Heavy some. Providing physical protection and enhanced survival in extreme temperatures. Mm -hmm. Oh, so can I go into like those those heat vents now or something? Um, yeah, you won't take as much damage from stuff like heat, and I think you can hang out like around the vents. You can't, get, you still can't get hit by the fire, but you should be able to swim in there. And then also, you'll take significantly less damage from creature attacks, which is like crazy helpful. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very okay, very okay. helpful. Yeah. I'm um, curious. Can I make a water? Oh no, power! What? Oh, I need to place battery. I'm I'm curious. Like, do where do I get the water distillery? I've seen that as like a thing that you can get. Um. Oh, that you'll have. That's. I think you can only get that from like much deeper wrecks. At least as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like a late game thing. Um. There's also yeah. a suit that you can get that will help um reduce your water usage. The still suit. Um. Yeah. But it's, it, it again. Makes, that's another one that's hard to find. Mix food and water out of your poop or something, yeah. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, basically, it's basically the thing from Dune. Yeah. Okay. Pog. All right. Well. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I better roll like... off because if I don't, my chat might kill me for not finishing the meme stream. Um, boy, are they in for a surprise. Um, but uh, yeah, but I, I I I'm really glad we got to chit chat and uh, hang out, and we should we should do it again sometime. And when Hightail comes out, maybe we can uh, maybe we can play together. That'd be that'd be pretty fun. Oh yeah, Hytale all the way. All the only game I'm playing, the only game I'm streaming. Uh, the night it comes out or the day it comes out, I'm doing 24 hour stream. Holy the game right shit! Away, so. Good luck yeah, with that. I can't even listen. My longest stream ever was 13 and a half hours, and that almost killed me. So, uh, good luck on a 24 um, hour stream. Jesus fucking Christ! I, I 24 hour stream before before I got big, but like you stream way longer than I do. Okay, if I I need your perseverance when it comes to streaming. If I had your perseverance, I feel like I would be unstoppable. But I I'm afraid I get like exhausted after only a few hours of streaming. I think like my longest politics stream was like eight hours or something damn well i mean listen eight hours is respectable i know uh it's kind of one of my unique strengths is my my long range endurance um but you know i also don't like stream every day i stream you know monday wednesday friday and then shorter stream well okay i always say shorter streams on sundays they never end up being shorter um but you know i don't know uh i had i didn't always stream this long but I don't know. It's, I've settled into it. I, I like. I end up in getting on stream and then having fun. I didn't even have anything prepped for today, and I ended up having so because because uh, Jangles canceled. So like, I didn't have anything else prepped really. Um, but I ended up having so much fun that I stick around. So, yeah. I I envy 
I envy being able to stream that long. I well, do. maybe we'll do like a maybe someday we'll do like a um, a Rocky style like training montage, and I'll teach you how to do um, long long time or long distance streaming, and then you'll be like the champion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I look forward to that. Well, Zan, thanks for having me on, and thanks for talking with me, and uh, let's talk again soon. All right. Yeah. Um, hit me up uh, anytime, especially if I'm alive. I'll probably be down. If especially if I'm doing a game stream. I'll, uh, I'll be down to have you on. Hell Talk yeah. To Sick. Talk to you soon. Right. See ya. Have a good one. Hey, that was nice. That was nice. Aw, Zan's wonderful. Aw, that was so nice.